quick comment on that. You know, so essentially, you know, we have uh, five Indian American leaders here. We have two more coming, right? Our keynote speakers are uh, Congressman Rokana, and then we have Assembly Member Ashwala who are coming in. And then we have two more. Anybody know the names of the two others? Anybody? We have totally nine Indian American elected leaders. I'm not going to ask Yogi. I'm not going to ask uh, Nagesh. I'm, I'm, I'm going to wait for a response. We have two other Indian American leaders here in Silicon Valley. Yogi. Yes, Yogi is. Yogi is one. Any, any, any takes? Okay, we have Gary Singh. Gary Singh is a council member in Union City. And then we have, uh, we also have uh, Sharon Kaur, who's a trustee in Union City. And then we have A. Gupta. A. Gupta, he's a council member in Dublin. So in Dublin, we actually have two council members, which is phenomenal. He's a white man, right? No. <coughs> But I'll tell you, it's it's so hard for us Indian Americans to win, and I'll tell you why. There's one reason why. Because let's look at Saratoga, because we are running through the demographics of South San Francisco. Saratoga has 10% Indian American population, 10%, which is 3,000. How many of them how many of them are registered to vote? It's about like 50, 60 percent, not a whole lot. But how many of them vote on a regular basis? 145 out of 3,000. It's a pretty staggering number when you think of it. So if we, when Indian Americans run for office, it becomes a little bit harder because so we need to have a base to win. So that's the challenge that we are facing. And so let's keep going. And I just want to mention that key statistical data. And that's why it's very important for us to not only register to vote, and we have voter registration happening back there. And we have the forms for you if you would like to register to vote. If you are an independent, you would like to switch over to a Democrat, we can make it happen for you today. It's very important to register to vote and please cast your vote. That will make a huge difference locally. Let's go Thank you, Rishi. Um, so the question was, why did I run? Uh, as I mentioned in my introduction, I was doing things in the community for several years. I was volunteering in different places on the board of different organizations. So I thought I was doing my due for my community. And I had absolutely no intention for running for political office. And then I was ushered. I was, my arms were twisted. And I was asked to run. I was told that you're anyway doing all these things, what's the harm in having a title along with it? Um, and in one of those weak moments, I said yes. Uh, it, <laughs> and to be very, very honest, I have not regretted that. It's been a lot of work. I shared this earlier with Mayor uh, Pradeep Gupta. It's more than a 24-7. Uh, I am constantly doing something or the other. It, it never ends. But the interaction with the community is just the best, best blessing you could ever have. It comes wrapped in a gift in several forms. Every day you learn something. So I would not miss this for, for the world. So it's been an excellent experience, and I would encourage all of you to take that step. It's real, and well, you're only taking that step by being here, but do take the next step. Well, I think the comment was made that uh, politics is corrupt. Um, I think politics is a very noble profession. Um, unfortunately, people are very corrupt. And I think it's a great way to help a lot of people. Um, I got involved because uh, maybe about 12 years ago, the mayor at the time, his name was Bob Wasserman, he's passed on now. And, and he said, hey, Raj, you know, you're a young guy. You've been great on the Human Relations Commission. Um, at that time, I had zero interest in community service or politics. I just want to be the best in my profession. And I said, OK, fine, I'll, I'll get on. And once I got on, I saw a lot of the needs we had in the community, you know, from seniors or from issues, homelessness. Uh, you name it, it was there. And I felt I could make a difference. And I felt I could help the people. And uh, and I have good temperament. I, I can get along with the two groups. They were connected. Work with the two groups to uh, build consensus. So before I got on, they were always fighting. And I was like, why are you guys fighting? You know, what's the issue? And it was just egos. And so uh, I was able to solve that. I did a good job. The mayor said, OK, how about my commission now? You know, we need somebody like you in that background. And so I sort of worked my way up. Um, the thing again about the corruption, it's, you know, as elected official, you have to file paperwork. So any property or any asset that I own is an open book. I have to file it every year. Uh, being in politics is a good way to become poor. <laughs> uh, for example, today I was working in, in my practice. I had a rush over here. That's why I'm not, you missed my jacket here and I'm a little late. Sorry, Rishi. Um, but it cost me a lot of money to do this politics. I run a multi-million dollar practice. Every time I go, 
I have to pay somebody to cover for me, but I'm not there. When I go to these evening programs, there's a cost for each program. And I figure out the hour. But it's it's kind of like a, a calling, a disease. The more you do it, the better you feel, the more people you can help. So the way I justify it is that this is a way for me to help more people by uh, being on city council because I help 232,000 people that live in Fremont. Sometimes I help people in Yuma City and Hayward and Newark because they have nobody else to go to. And so I feel it's a good way for me to help the people. I feel good about myself. One of the things that my dad always taught me is giving is receiving. A lot of people want to receive before they give. And what I have found is that the more you give, the more you get. And so it has been a great uh, philosophy for me. And I think it's a great way for me to give back to my community. And I think we need uh, young and energetic leaders to represent our community because they understand our issues and our, our problems, and they're able to represent us at a state and a local level. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, it's kind of an interesting platform to sit on, and you've heard very different stories about how we each got here. Um, and I think some of the times, like Savita mentioned, is we're not traditional plan politicians, okay? And I, I think that's a core fundamental of what each one of us has mentioned. And I mentioned earlier about being positive, disruptive change. Positive, okay? Not negative. And so inside of there, when you talk about positive, disruptive change, it's about the foundation that you come with. And that's what I want to focus on. Now, how I got to where I did was all by accident. But there, when you look 2020 in a rear, it was fundamental key steps that made us what we are today. And so my dad was an Alameda County uh, engineer. Sorry, is that better? Yes. As a DJ, I should have known that. See, it's another <laughs> difference, right? Uh, so he was an engineer for Alameda County for 32 years. I became a civil engineer, went to San Jose State, both bachelor's and master's. But then from there, I went around the nation doing project controls and seeing and developing and working with politicians, working with legislative leaders on how to actually fund programs and deliver solutions. From that, I decided to return back as an engineer for Alameda County, did that for uh, seven and a half years. And then I went to Alameda County Transportation Commission for eight and a half years. Inside of there, the key difference of that model was 22 elected officials had reported directly to getting stakeholder buy-in. You had the county supervisors, you had the 13 mayors, you had the transportation agencies. That is not an easy thing to do. Okay, so Viva mentioned she was with VTA or did some work with VTA and no, is still I'm, doing it. Correct, I'm on the board of VTA, okay. after, but after. After, yeah. okay. So the, the key piece there was, in my tail end of the year with Alameda CTC, I helped, and as a volunteer, push a bond measure for the first transportation sales tax to get a 66.67 threshold pass, okay, making it 1% okay, for, until 2020. And through there, I learned a lot of other things. And in parallel, I was on the planning commission for the city of Dublin for four years. In September of 2015, I announced for the first time disruptively, positive disruption, my campaign to run for city council. And the council in itself wanted me not to succeed. So in December of 2015, they took a municipal code change to actually try to remove a council member or a commission member from office. And in February of 2016, they called me to a public testimony, first time ever, okay? And the community came out in support. What nobody knew was that was so disruptive to me, I was getting ready to withdraw. And that lit my flame. It said, you are now on a conveyor belt to deliver to the community, carry a community voice, and carry positive disruption, positive disruption, in making positive solutions, not only for the city, for the local, for the regional, and then the transportation industry started to follow behind me. Because I know how to get funding, I know how to deliver solutions, and I know how to actually make a positive impact on everybody's day-to-day -day life. Thank you, Thank you. Well, we, have two more. we have two more questions, and then uh, we have a few other questions. Let's uh, give a shout-out to Assembly Member Ash Kalra. And let's 
shout out to Dr. Chopra. All of you from Bihar. Let's give a shout out to uh, Akshay Monglik. Everyone. Akshay is doing a video streaming. It's on Facebook Live. One of you, be careful what you say here. Okay, we go to our next question, which was, you know, I'm all about use cases, right? Because what you heard was, it's kind of very difficult, you know. Arun Goyal, even before he ran for office, folks were trying to basically topple him out, right? It's kind of, politics is very, very ugly, can be very difficult, can be very lonely, and usually it takes a trigger, it takes a trigger. You know, Arun talked about this trigger for running for office, it takes a trigger, and you will know internally that we are ready with that trigger to run for office, right? It's an internal, internal conscious thing that kicks in and says, you gotta run. Right? So I'll, I'll go to Arun and I would like to specifically bring up one specific use case that you have impacted since you got elected, right? Because, you know, it's, it's a very difficult, difficult job. You know, Savita said 24 by 7, more than 24 by 7, right? It takes a significant commitment. So what is the use case? You know, what makes you, what makes you feel alive when you are an elected lead, leader representing your community? You know? So what was that use case that you delivered for your community that makes you feel really happy about? That's a tough one. Um, you know, I've only been elected since November of last year. And I think still trying to put on the proper shoes and understand the position. Uh, but I think one of the platforms where people really felt and thought, and I'm forgetting your question because now you made me nervous with Well, you know, but the question is a little bit unfair to Arun, you know. So basically you can you can think about it if you would like to, because he's recently elected. But it's all about the impact that you have brought as a council member. You know, what makes you feel happy, right? Something very little. You know, maybe you solved somebody's uh, traffic uh, stop sign issue where you put uh, enforcement there, and they basically gave out a few tickets, and then I ended up getting the ticket too. So, yeah. <laughs> so and I think I'm going to focus back on my transportation. Uh, that was something that resonated pretty strong with the booming city that we were and are in the city of Dublin. If you've seen and passed through the 580 corridor, you'll actually see how much we've changed as a city and grown. Um, kind of talking a little demographics for a second. Uh, maybe about 10, 15 years ago, we were less than 35,000 people. We are now at 58 and our future growth is anticipated to be near.